Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to the Witcher Circus, and today we are back in a cool-looking summer-ish background, the flagellant is looking at the waves and at the sunset, and here I am with Shep's dress 4 and with the occultist. So people have been asking me to play occultist, finally it's here. I usually don't play him because he's kind of meh against the Shieldbaker teams, he's kind of meh in some of those situations, and I, I kind of just prefer sticking to the other girl backliners, like the, the Musketeer and the Arbalist, and uh, no, maybe not for the strength teams, but for the strength teams it would be more like Grave Robber, and uh, what do you call it, and the Anticarn as well, and of course the Doggy too. So today I'm playing against Mr. D, he seems to be playing kind of a really weird team honestly this looks like i don't know what this is it has flagellant it has men at arms sure it has a freaking musketeer for support i believe and then it has a jester kind of just to get that finale pressure going so maybe they just want to get a lot of pressure going and after that pressure does actually get going they're going to be more uh, you're going to be more defensive with these three characters, perhaps that's it. I think I'm actually just going to go full on aggression. They have a lot of dodge, especially after using the bolster and having that round one buff. So I'm going to go for the command buff, I'm going to go for the abyssal artillery here with Omni Peasant, and also going to go for the Rain of Sorrows. In terms of the setup that I'm bringing, I'll be honest, I really don't play Chef Stress 4. This is not one of my most played teams, it's not one of my favorite teams. Uh, I, I didn't build it either. <laughs> yeah, it's just called Chef Stress 4 for, uh, for ease, basically. But yeah, it is definitely not one of the teams I'm most comfortable with. And it's kind of ironic that I'm playing it against Mr. D because he's one of the people that is kind of comfortable with it. So and then maybe I can teach him how this team should really be played. Either that or he's just uh, foaming at the mouth of in terms of just looking at how I'm playing it, right? Yeah, hopefully not though. Let's. I've brought a full-on aggressive setup on my heroes. I bring. I've brought the flashlight with the rain of sorrows and the crimson hook as well as the pounder. So no reclaims available. The only sort of defense that I really have here is the Sigin embrace with the stealth. Now, of course, against what this musketeer has, that's not going to be too useful. Uh, considering that eliminating shot, uh, yeah, it's, it's really not going to be too useful. Should I bolster in a situation like this, or do I think they're just going to win through dot? I think they are just going to win through dot. I genuinely don't think bolster is going to be useful, especially against the accuracy buffs that they're going to be bringing, so I'm just going to start going for those bellows. I unfortunately miss my freaking bellow on the chest, which is crazy. 132 accuracy, wasn't it? Yeah, 132 accuracy, and I still can't hit. Jester with bolster. It's not every day you see a jester with bolster, is it? Uh, all teams have jester and bolster. I guess the ludic special has a flagellant and an antiquarian. Oh, it's kind of like that. Yeah, except except the musketeer is different on the defense. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like that. It's so odd though. <laughs> the setup is so odd, but you know it seems to be working relatively well. It might beat me. We, we don't know just yet. I'm probably not going to get to bleeds now because of the extra blue resistance. Oh, I still do. Well, ne never lucky, I suppose. There is no justice in this world, as they say. I'm not getting any bleeds on the men arms, so because of the freaking Rancid cure -all. They're going for the reclaims now. This is going to be really difficult to break through with the stress ceiling, with the reclaims, and the guards, and the Rancid cure -all. Yeah, and my sustain is, you know, really not going to last very long. I want to transform twice, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to. That's the problem. I don't think they have enough damage to finale me at the moment. They have 9 to 16 so I should be fine. They can go for it, but there's a relatively decent chance that they'll just yeah, mess it up entirely. So I'm going to go for the beast final here, and let's be honest, they're probably going to get the finale off of my abomination regardless of what I do. Even if I go for manacles here, they just get it the next turn. After a shot or something of the likes, if I go for stealth, they'll just go for the aim shot. And I will go for, I mean, I mean they'll just go for the ranging shot. I will go for the stealth, still, but do I do it just yet? Hmm. I don't think they will not finale me yet. Maybe next turn. Because, let's see, I go with some artillery, they go harvest, and I stealth, then they de stealth. So I actually have to stealth this turn. Yeah, I actually have to stealth this turn. So I'm going to go for the stealth here, because if I get two transformations off, this is huge, right? It's absolutely ginormous. So now they have to de stealth me, but after they de stealth me, I will re stealth. And they won't actually be able to, and they won't actually be able to get the finale off on me. I'll just be able to transform freely, which is really nice. Unless they go harvest buckshot, which I mean could could, uh, could work. <laughs> that could be 
my end here. The freaking harvest bug shot strat, but we'll see. I'm gonna keep going on the aggression. And yeah, I'm I'm not getting bleeds. What little bleeds I'm getting, they're regening them away. And I'm not getting stress either because there's things for Fiodine, there's Numbing Instance, there's Bolster, and there's freaking ranging shots. So I don't know if I have enough offense. I'm glad I brought the full offensive setup. Maybe I could be spamming bolts. I mean spamming command buff and just going hard on this Chester. I, I could do that. I could do that. Honestly, I'm probably gonna do that. I'm gonna go for the command buff turn here, and I might just go for a rage on that freaking Chester. Or, or something of the likes. Maybe a transform slam even, putting the musketeer back in position too. Or rather, in position too. And yeah, that might be that might be the play for me right now. It's it's difficult though, it's a tricky it's a tricky match. Anyway, also the tournament is going to begin somewhat soon. It's beginning in three or so weeks, so if you haven't registered yet, do remember to register. I made an information video on it yesterday, but somehow those videos never seem to, to do so well. Uh, maybe people are more interested in the actual video themselves with matches and, you know, actually just hearing me yap for, I believe, was 16 minutes about the, the tournament rules. So, yeah, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't plan to make it that long. It just always happens. I keep talking about the rules and explaining you know every tiny little detail and it's just sense of going crazy but I, I hope you don't mind that too much either also i'm gonna have so much freaking damage after i transform again i'm gonna have plus 70 percent damage and sure i might um oh how, how do i put it i might go to this store so i'm gonna have less damage but i might be able to get a kill here believe it or not I think Slam is a very good chance of hitting and a very good chance of dealing enough damage. Oh, 10 to 19. So here's the thing. Here's here's why I'm still going to go Slam. Uh, it's because he's going to be guard broken. He do I don't push him? What the hell are you talking about? I don't push a freaking chance there. Why do I not bring that on this team? I freaking hate Spike Chain Abomination, man. It's so annoying. Like, I could have missed that because of no net. And I don't get the freaking full. I mean, the push. That's so crazy. Ah, uh, not having that. Things I hate. But yeah, at least now we have a chance of getting the death. Also, I'm, I'm still stealth. That's right. Stealth lasts for two turns. <laughs> it's actually pretty, pretty neat that it's lasting for two turns. I only have plus 20 accuracy, though. That's a bit unfortunate. I could detransform stun, but then I, I can be killed. I can be oofed. So I can... Actually, I can even go weakening curse. That's probably my best hit chance at the moment. Yeah, guaranteed. Oh, that's huge. That should be GG. That should be GG. No justice in this world for Mr. D. Also, you might look at the characters and they might look a bit odd. That's because I remember to change the background, but I forgot to change the characters from the courtyard. Uh, or rather, the... There, there's this, these filters of colors that Darkest Dungeon puts into each of their backgrounds. And yeah, I had the, the courtyard ones, which looked fine for the courtyard, but they look a bit odd in, in such a bright, good-looking background. So yeah, a bit unfortunate. You know what I can do here? Oh, this is such a crazy move. It might just work. It might just work. Okay, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. I'm going to guard here. This guard is gonna make it so he has an extra 50% damage because I had two command buffs on him, so now he has a lot of freaking damage! Yeah, he has plus 55% from other skill, and... No, no, he's gonna get more than that, isn't he? Because he has plus 45% damage, plus 50% damage all guarded. Yeah, he's gonna get a, a crazy ton of damage. He also has crit buff, so he's, he's actually gonna go wild. Oh, I'm not sure if I agree with their move to stop the guard there. I can... A slam won't do enough damage, unfortunately. Rage will... But after I rage, they will just guard, which, you know, it's a bit tricky. Perhaps slam does enough damage if I crit it? Like, perhaps. It's a huge perhaps. So let's see. 11 to 21. No, it's not enough. They have 40 prot on that uh, on that fell. It's just not enough. I'm, I'm still going to go for the rage, though. Yeah, I'm still going to go... Okay, okay, the rage was enough. That means they have to guard if they don't want to suffer 20%. I freaking love guarding the abomination with command buffs. He just does so much damage in these in these stress teams, because this is a pure stress team, but it's good time. So they have to change the guard here. And they are gonna go first next turn, and they are just gonna go for probably an exsanguinate, I imagine. They might go for a musketeer heal, but I think that would be a bit a bit silly of them because if they do that, I will just go for manacles on the musketeer, and then she won't have her turn, and uh, the abomination will still be alive. The men-at-arms probably won't be alive. 
I might be able to save him with another Sigil Embrace, but yeah, Sigil Embrace goes hard. Miss. Ah, no, no, I don't think they have a miss chance. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even go for the... What do you call it? I didn't even go for the bolster. But yeah, now we're just gonna de-transform. We're gonna go for a Manacles on the Musketeer. Or are we? Or are we? We could just go for the for the cell fuel here. That's also a possibility. Uh, I mean, dropping manacles on her would be huge. I mean, she wouldn't get her turn. The horror would keep piling. I think this is better, actually. Yeah, I think this is better. Currently, the Man Arms is just guarding the Abomination as well, so he just needs to take one for the team here. Be a bit risky and start going for stuns on that on that Musketeer. We need to get rid of her turn and get some stuff going. I'm probably... I could even click the Man Arms, go for, like, uh, a bolster even at this point in time, and then drop another Sigina Brace on him. They will be able to hit him, but he will be out of the store because the DOT will be gone. The question is, do I think that's a good idea? Yeah, that is the real question here. I'm gonna go for the bolster first. I think bolster is fine to use. But Shep, it's round five. Why are you bolstering round five? Well, let's make sure that I don't really get the affliction on my abomination now. And I don't need accuracy anymore. I don't need bell anymore. So dropping a bolster round five is, is perfectly fine, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it looks very odd, to, to say the least. But it is perfectly fine. Now I could go this artillery and keep doing some stress, or I could save this man at arms. But the thing is, regardless of what happens, I'm gonna go punish on the flagellant here. They can't clear the bleeds, so I'm going to exhaust the flagellant, and when the, cor and when the corpse goes away, all they will have is musketeer with buckshot and man at arms with bellow, which freaking sucks! Both of those abilities suck. While I have an occultist in the back just spamming weakening curses, most likely. Do I go for it, though? I mean, what's their first turn? Just shooting me? Could be. Mm. You know what? Screw it. Screw it. Let's do it then. Let's do it. I I think this is good. I might force them to go for an Exsanguinate here again. And if they use another Exsanguinate, this is uh, this is fine. Because I'm not going to use my Man at Arms turn until they've used their Musketeer turn. And I have 1-2, while well, they have 1-2, but they have to click first. So the only way that they can kill my Man at Arms this turn, this turn 6, is gonna be through actually just going for the exsanguinate because I will drop them to this store with another punish and they don't want to be at this store obviously <laughs> that's that's not good for, for the flat one he does not want to be at this store so they're gonna go for the bellow I might go for the abyss artillery now just to start applying some horror I think that would be perfectly fine by me I could go for a pull on the man at arms that's also a possibility I don't think it's worthwhile yeah, I, I, I don't think it's worthwhile, honestly. I'm just gonna do this and uh, keep applying some horror. And, and you know it's gonna stack up. It's gonna stack up. They have to keep going for those stress heals. They can go for the ranging shot here, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, they will go for the ranging shot and these stealth me, but it doesn't make too much of a difference. I wasn't gonna bell for the stress anyway. <laughs> I, I don't think. I have to I have to keep guarding here. But belling for the stress, I mean, it, it's fine. But that 50% is not going to be it's not going to be huge. Okay, interesting that they do that. Quite interesting that they do that. I'm going to go for the punish here. Oh, it's a crit. It's a crit. If I got a min roll or so Oh, it's not enough, though! It's not, it's not enough! Freaking Gladiator Helm Flagellant. Just hard carrying this. God damn it. Even with a crit, I don't believe really bring him down to zero. Yeah, it's because with the Gladiator Helm, not only does he get an extra 10 prods, his heals actually heal him for an extra 4 HP, which is huge! It's massive, because this gives him 5 HP. But it, and even though it only gives him 5 HP, he heals for way more. Way the hell more. I can bellow here for stress, unironically. That's gonna cause an affliction if I hit. You know what, let's go for it. There's nothing else that my abomination wants to do. I'm gonna do... What? It said 14! The... Okay, am I going crazy? Didn't it say 14? I'm... And she had 87 stress, or did she have 83 stress? Oh, did she have 84 stress? Oh no, I, I, I'm 99% sure she, that she had 87 stress, but... Yeah, because who, where else did I see the 87? I'm so confused. How, how could have she taken less stress? I don't know, I have no clue. I am clueless. I am clueless as of this moment, but... You know what, all game on, she's still gonna go afflicted once she clicks, or maybe once the flash one drops to this door. Uh, she, maybe she doesn't take two stress from that, maybe she only takes one. We'll see. 
Yeah, because flash on dropping the store could stress her out a bit. You're gonna go defender. Oh, I run out of guards. I run out of guards, unfortunately. This means I get a free manacles on the musketeer, though, and I'm 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 definitely gonna go. No, 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 not yet. I would go for it, but not yet. I'm gonna go for the vessel artillery first. This is more stress efficient. This makes it so she goes afflicted immediately and starts taking the horror. We want to be stress efficient. Every little bit counts. So let's do this. The abomination still has another one of his uh, self heals, and my flash is just chilling as it is. So yeah, they're going to guard the. Flash one, this means that it's going to be kind of difficult to just get rid of him. They're going to go punish. Uh, lucky? Ah, no. Never lucky. Never lucky. I am dropping this door then. I might go for the absolution. Uh, I might be forced to go for the absolution here. Yeah, this is kind of the problem with this team. I guess it's the same with Shep's Dress 1, is that you don't really have too much in the terms of defense. You know, the occultist can use his Stygian Embraces, and that's all nice and good. But that's really all I have here. <laughs> it's not enough. Oh, you know what I could do? I could move. No, there's no way. I could move forward twice and, and blight, but no, that's crazy. I could, though. I could go for another Bellow for Stress. That is one of the possibilities. Or I could move back with the Abomination and guard him again. That is another one of the possibilities. Or I could go Manacles and guard him. Regardless. Well, I think I still have a command buff on there. Oh, no, wait, I don't. Uh, let's do this then. Uh, I kind of wasted a turn of bleed resistance, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, if they want to kill someone, it's going to have to be my abomination here. So, I mean, the men are so, you know, have fun. We're just going to go for yeah, stuns on that musketeer and keep bringing her closer and closer to to her inevitable demise. And then we're going to have to deal with the flange on men are arms duo at the end, which is usually not too nice. They, especially with uh, numbing instance, rent secure, all this is a duo that's very difficult to deal with, especially with our claim, but we're just gonna have to suck it up and see if we can get things done anyway. Do I go command buffs? I actually have a decent amount of dodge. I don't think my hit chances are guaranteed. I have 105, 113. Yeah, they're not guaranteed. <laughs> my hit chances are unironically not guaranteed. Well, let's go for the command buff then. We really don't want to mess it up by missing a freaking abyss artillery now. And, uh, you know, bells aren't really doing too much for me here on the debuff, so I'm gonna go for this. They're going to heal up a bit, as you do. Do I go for the immediate stun? Ah, it's tricky. I forgot when the Jester died, by the way. I think it was round 3? 4? 3? No, I think it was 4. Yeah, probably round 4. Well, I have a bit of extra damage now, so let's go for it. Uh, 4 to 7, do we get it? We do, huge. Okay, this is when you really love having the spike chain. Just a 25 sucks, a 40% is almost doable with uh, with those manacle stuns and the spike chain. I also got a repost for 12 on that freaking on that freaking chest earlier. I kind of forgot to mention it, but it was, it was quite good. We are just gonna go aggressive, yeah. It's just the only move, and oh, there we go. Those are the sweet crits that the occultists can do. We haven't really seen too many, but if you have command buffs, and this is kind of like a backline destruction team, if you have the command buffs and you have that flashbound grimoire on the occultists and you go for those abyssal artilleries, you're gonna get some crits, you're gonna get some juicy crits. And not only does it do more stress because of the crit, so instead of doing 8, it's gonna do 18, it also applies another turn of horror. So getting crits with the occultists is just Massive, absolutely massive. This musketeer is dead, basically. I just drop a punish on her and she's gone, and then it's a 4v2. And of course, it's not going to be a 4v2 for long, because they're going to kill my mana arms, and then they're going to try to kill my abomination, but... Okay, looks like it's going to be somewhat soon, unfortunately, but yeah, we should be we should be okay in the meantime. I'm going to go for a punish here, hopefully bring her down to zero. Oh yeah, she's so toast. She is so toast. You cannot save her anymore. She is a goner. She's a complete goner. The Man at Arms is selfish. He's going to have to keep guarding every single turn. And do I still think Mr. D can win this? I think so, honestly. But he just has to deal with my flange, which has a bit more healing than his does. And I do have to... The Crimson Hook to deal with that, uh, deal with Mana Arms at the end, so it is possible that we just get things done. I could go Manacles and Weakening Curse into the Flash one here, just just high roll it super hard, pray that I get the immediate stun into the immediate kill. There is a decent chance that I would win if I did that. My chance of getting the stun was like, what, a 40? And chance of getting the kill was a 20. So, you know, I could have done that. I could have done that, but I don't think it's too wise. Do I go for the pull? It doesn't make a difference, honestly. It's just a bit more horror, right? Yeah, it's just a bit more horror than what the... this artillery would be. How about the Weakening Curse? Those debuffs look decent. 
But let's go for this. It's a bit of harder. It causes more harm. It causes 40. Uh, rather than this one, which causes 32. But this one does stress too. Uh, I guess it's gonna end up being the same. Yeah, now he's in position 1, you know, it doesn't make too much of a difference. But I have no heals here. If I had the weird reconstruction, if I had the weird reconstruction, my abomination would be beyond dead because of their chester. It's just a weird reconstruction that really saved the match. I, I'm gonna have to say they go for the for the exanguinate here because they're dreading that I get one of those uh, that I get one of those manacles. Which fair enough, I'm probably gonna get it eventually. I'm gonna go for the crit punish and yeah, we get a bleed on there. That's 24 damage. The mineral is already dropping to zero. That sucks. Yeah, it's just rent secure. All sometimes works. Sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, when you're dealing with a flagell that actually has the, the crimson hook and he gets a bit lucky with the crits as well, because this gives you more crit chance. Eventually, you're gonna you're gonna suffer a bleed or two. It's only when you're dealing with flagells that have like crown of thorns, or that have snuff, or that have gladiator helm, or even hemlock sometimes that you're just gonna feel really invincible with the man arms but even then it's only sometimes you don't always feel invincible with him but anyway it's time to go for the stuns i could move back twice oh that's actually an idea i can still do it i can still do it it depends on the corpse being here or not i i suppose I mean, yeah i'm just going to remove the man arms so they can't use any of the redeems and i think this is just going to be uh the slow march towards victory tbh so yeah, I'm going to move back now with my with my abomination because they don't have Reign of Sorrows. And look at this, this is genius. This team is nice! This team is nice! Uh, the reason I don't play it is because Shieldbreaker exists as a character and Shieldbreaker just counters the occultists really hard. Because if you were playing against a damage team, a lot of the strategy would be just using the Man at Arms to guard the occultists so he stays safe. You do bring the Monkey Spawn just to give yourself a little bit of defense and if they try to focus on other targets, decision number is just huge, huge, as they saw in this match. Even though they had Illuminate shot it just managed to save the abomination long enough Wait, the <laughs> oh that's so funny they're moving <laughs> oh that's so funny they're, they're moving back so i can't hit them with bile on the men arms and they're moving back because they don't want to hit my flash one. obviously they don't want to hit my flash one. if they hit the flash ones i just i just have a really terrible time here but uh, th that is hilarious yeah that is actually hilarious so he's dead yeah he's dead even if they reclaim now so that's uh, that's not something we have to worry about. So I'm just gonna go for uh, for weakening curse on their flash. But the corpse should be going away. Yeah, it has enough bleed on it to go away. So yeah, normally a doggy at the end of the match here would pretty much do nothing against the flash one because. I guess you do a little bit of DOT, you do like two strengths or something like that. But the occultists can actually do some okay -ish strengths. Uh, against Bolster it's going to be a bit harder, but the occultist sometimes pulls through. And this might be one of those matches. So they're going to get an extra few resistances in just a second. I'm going to go for the... Do I go for the Bile? I can hit them back. Or I... No, I think going for the stun uh, for the first move is a bit better. So yeah, let's go for the stun. The, the Man at Arms is a dead man walking at this point. Oh, unfortunately, we failed the stun. I don't think Mr. D can still win this. He's a bit in denial. Yeah, he is a teeny tiny bit in denial that he can still win this, but it just was lost as I killed that Chester with the Weakening Curse, I believe. I think he lost it there. The 25% chance, just making sure that none of my characters die so quickly, because this wasn't that good of a matchup. That Chester was going to completely demolish my midline, and he did with those harvests, and then he was going to finale one of them. It was going to be really bad. He could, they could have even gone for a shot on the Occultist and then a finale on him, as I least expected it, or something of the likes. So yeah, Mr. D now just surrenders, and the Occultist stress team is going to stand strong. So there aren't too many occultist strength teams. There's also Kalashnikov, which is pretty fun. But yeah, I don't play occultist too much because of his bad matchups. But you know, he's fun. He's definitely not one of the worst characters. Definitely not. He's very powerful in his own right. Abyss Artillery is huge. Demon's Pull is huge. Weakening Curse is decent as a final ability. And Stygian Embrace Weird are nice abilities. I wish I had both, but you. You know, he also suffers from not being able to use both. But anyways, hope you all enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers.